Hey guys, what's going on? Wanted to talk to you guys briefly about um, choosing the correct compression ratio for your build. How do you know what is the right one for you and for your power goals? Um, I quickly just put together a list today of stock engines with their stock compression ratios and boosts. Let's quickly run through this and then we can discuss it in more length. Uh, Toyota Supra late 90s, 320 horsepower US spec, 8.5 comp, compression ratio and 12 PSI boost. Mercedes, um, I think it's the Mercedes 2020. Um, the best one is a 2 liter T, uh, the, sorry the most, the highest boost one, uh, 421 horses, it's direct injected. And they're running stock 2.1 bar of a 9.0 to 1 compression ratio. Um, VW Audi Group uh, 1.8 turbo, 180 horsepower, 9.5 compression, and 11.6 psi. Going on is the Saab 2 litre turbo, 207 horsepower, 9.5 to 1, and 12.3 psi boost. A uh, newer one is the Civic. It's the late. I think it's the latest one from the US. Um, 306 horsepower, 9.8 to 1 compression, and quite high, um, 23.2 uh, psi. I must note that the Civic's direct injected. Suzuki Swift Sport 1.4 turbo, 9.9 to 1, and almost one bar of boost, or 14.2 psi. Daihatsu Materia Turbo, 150 horsepower, 10.1 compression ratio, and about 8.7 psi boost. Lotus 1.8 supercharged, uh, 220 horsepower, high 11.5 to 1 compression ratio, and a 7.3 psi boost. Um, You'll also note that some of the Audis, uh, they've got very high compression ratios, even though they're turbocharged. Um, and you'll also notice that they're direct injected, which gives you in cylinder cooling. So it's, it practically just cools down that charge further, preventing knock. Um, what is best for you? Uh, you're going to just have to decide how much boost you're going to run. Um, if you're going to run high boost, you might want to instead of going for an air-to-air -air intercooler, maybe you should decide on an air-to-water intercooler, which is more effective at um, bringing down the boost or the intake temperatures. Um, it's going to be very effective. Um, another thing I might add is good engine management. Um, ignition timing has a part to play. Um, sometimes you can um time your ignition in in a in a low boost motor or an na motor you can advance the timing so effectively while the piston is still coming up those last few millimeters bam in ignition and the combustion process has already started while the piston is coming up and then it stops and then it comes down so you get high power out of those but for high boost applications um i would say turn back that ignition timing um, retard it and keep it at zero degrees or sorry a top dead center um, uh, yeah basically a lot of engines will use um, direct injection um, as we said there's other things like water and meth injection to keep the to keep the intake temperature down um, also what I would notice is there's aluminium engines because they're better at conducting heat away from the cylinders it's less prone to hot spots whereas like an iron block um, it gets hot spots in it so generally speaking aluminium engines can take a bit more boost stock than iron engines just because of this this fact that it's a good conductor of heat um, yeah so I would definitely say management um, I'd say look at your RPM um, what I'm noticing as well is uh, back pressure. So, for instance, if you're going to have a turbo that's very spooly and spools quickly, you're going to have a very small small area to radius ratio. 
that's good for spool because you know your, your turbo's up and running quick in the rpm range um but it's bad for back pressure excess back pressure will inevitably cause excess heat and well excess heat on the side of the intake but then also excess restriction at extracting so if you're going to go big power it's best to go bigger ar like you know say 0.79 or 0.83 a, a to r ratio then rather like say a 0.63 because you're going to have hassles um so yeah those are the things that come to my mind uh for me i'm not going to go commit conventional a lot of the um the people that tune the four e fte engines um they'll go anywhere from eight to one all the way up to 8.5 maybe i've seen i've seen some builds like going 8.7 to one um for me i'm planning on as a minimum 10 10 to one compression ratio um the reason for that is, is because i'm going to be for the street running at relatively low boost i'm going to try and keep it to about 17 psi um and then basically that's another thing that comes to my mind is e85 and or race gas or alcohol fuel there will be effectively two maps on my build one will be a street map for normal petrol or gasoline and i'll do 17 psi low back pressure big ar on my turbo um and then for the second map on my on my ecu standalone i'm going to be running about 34 psi and I'm going to be running pure pure ethanol fuel. So that's also another way to keep the boost high and the compression ratio high. Why would you want a high compression ratio versus a low compression ratio? Well, um, I would say definitely what I've seen with higher compression ratios is your turbo can spool a lot quicker. I don't know if it's just the energy available um, low compression ratios tend to take a bit longer to get the turbo, tend, tend, it takes longer to get the energy out into the turbo. So definitely consider that and consider what you're using it for. Um, but like, I mean, I'm lucky that on my ECU, um, I, well, I'll have the two, the two versions of boost, um, or at least the two maps. So one is low boost for normal petrol. And then one is high boost for the alcohol. Um, typically speaking, because we know we can change our compression ratio based on the head gasket size. Um, my experiment was on my pistons. I was able to, to go minus 0.5 in one direction and plus 0.5 in the other just by changing the head gasket thickness. So maybe if you're struggling to decide on a compression ratio, maybe go halfway between um you know like for instance if you want um if you're looking at a nine to one compression ratio uh or at least sorry if you're looking at say an eight point an eight point five compression ratio it might be a good idea to go for nine pistons because you can bring it down a notch or you can bring it up a notch um and you can potentially experiment that way but i would say plus minus one on either side of the compression ratio that's currently in your car will be a, a good idea and if it's not working out for you you can just change your head gasket thickness so yeah just wanted to share that with you thanks for listening and see you guys soon bye bye